Hello again, welcome back to Illegally Cited. This is BGFH, back for some more iOS content here. And today I'm going to do yet another long overdue video that I have promised you guys on the channel for quite some time. I am going to try and show you... Let's get my AirPlay going here. Perfect. I'm going to do this on the phone because it has a better camera. And what I'm going to show you guys today is I am going to show you, start covering some of the magnification apps that turn your iOS device into a portable CCTV. So, you know, prior to things like iOS and even Android is getting some of these apps now, people would use, you know, portable CCTVs, which are really nice and some of them I still really, really do like. Um, you know, but it is an extra thing to carry with you and you're not going to always have it with you. But, you know, most people, pretty much 99, 100% of people I know always have their phone on them anyway. And so they can have, you know, it may not be quite as, uh, they may, they may not quite have the same refresh rate or color contrast, but in a pinch, they have a portable CCTV or magnifying solution. So I'm going to show you some of these apps here today. <clears throat> And I'm hoping that this reflector program will be able to, in fact, record these apps and not completely wig out on me. So I have a low vision folder on my home screen, as you can tell. I'm not going to go through every one of these. These are just a lot of uh, apps that I have tried in the past. And I probably can delete a couple of them because some of them are kind of meh. But I would say there's about three or four on here that I found to be pretty decent. The one that I've used the longest and that I still really rather like is this Over 40 Plus. Now in the bottom, I'm going to hit the flash button there. I have like a flash button, a camera button, and a pause button, which will freeze it. I am going to... Okay, sweetness, that does actually work. Now, uh, keep in mind, I would normally also be doing this in landscape, um, but just for the purposes of showing you this, um, I'm going to use it in portrait just so I don't have to worry about screwing up the recording. So I'm holding it, oh, I don't know, a good six inches away from my screen right now. I am in very low lighting. And I'm just, you know, rolling, or I'm just, uh, you know, going forward and reading left to right, um, reading this letter that I got from my uh, front office from our apartment. So, you know, and I have a slider on the bottom as well so I can zoom in and out but the other thing that I really like about this app is if I tap on the screen with two fingers one time keep in mind I'm using all of these apps without voiceover because I do not it focuses a lot faster and a lot of the things work better with voiceover off. So now that I have done that, I've hidden the interface and I can just pinch to zoom like I would on any, like, you know, when I showed you Safari and Mail and things like that, I can just pinch to zoom and my full screen, whether I'm using it in portrait or landscape, is magnified. If I want to turn the flash on and off, I just, t uh, let's see, what is it? Double tap with two finger, or with one finger on the screen, and you notice it got a lot dimmer <clears throat> because I've turned my flash off. Double tap it again, and there we go. If I tap two fingers once, oh, come here, buddy. There we go. And now my interface is back if I actually wanted to, in fact, use that. So, very nice app. I discovered this right when I got my iPhone 
actually, I think I found it when I used my tablet, and I found out how, how really bad the original, the iPad 2 cameras sucked. Um, but, yeah, they're not good, and without a flash, it's really kind of tough. So, you know, the cameras have gotten better on, like, the iPad Air and the new iPad Minis, but I would still say that if you, even though it's a smaller screen right now, you are going to want the more portability and the much better camera with an iPhone. So, we'll close out of that app there. That is Over 40 Plus. There are two versions of Over 40. There's the Over 40 Magnifier and there's the Over 40 Plus. I would highly recommend just splurging. I believe it's like four bucks for the Plus version. And that one the the free or lower cost version um, has an ad banner at the bottom of the screen so you're giving up screen real estate for this ad banner um, like I said in four bucks I it, it's five at most but I want to say I paid three or four dollars for it way back when for all I know the price has even dropped since but well worth the price the refresh rate is one of the best I've seen um, for magnifying and it's it's kind of one of my go-to. We sh I, like I said, I work uh, my current job. I, we do assessments with people, and we show them a lot of this iOS stuff. And it's been a standby for a couple of years now for our whole tech team, and a lot of our customers slash clients really also like that app. I'm going to open up my task manager and yoink, get that out of there for now. Because I don't want to have too much running here, just in case it affects the recording. Let's check out the second one, iCam. Now, the one limitation of Over 40 is that you cannot switch colors. So, if you're wanting a CCTV features, like being able to... Um, like being able to change different color contrasts you're not going to be able to do that here. So, again, I, there's a little button on top. I can turn my flashlight on. And I believe... I'm going to turn voiceover on for just a minute. Ah, oh, come here, buddy. Quit it. Okay. Okay. So I can pinch to zoom here as well. And this one shows up pretty clear. With the flash on, that actually looks pretty sharp. So that's not bad at all. The plus to this app is that now I have ah did not mean to do that I apologize so let's say that I want mm, sure let's see what that is we'll wait for the interface to go away Now, the one thing I will say is using some of these other alternative colors is that they may not look as crisp as a regular portable CCTV. They may not do that. And often, you know, when you're in full color, the performance isn't too bad. But when you are looking at some of these high contrast colors, um, you... Your performance may degrade some. So the refresh rate isn't going to be as high because your phone or your device actually has to do extra processing. Although right now, like I said, I've got 
all my other apps closed and even on this white on black which people generally really like it's not half bad and this is a pretty large magnification so you just gotta kinda play with it a little bit and this one is called iCam this one I believe is free um, if it isn't free it can't be more than a couple dollars either but I wanna say it might be free iCam that's another one that I found to be pretty good here is one more so again you're gonna get a lot of the same you know once you see one CCTV you've kinda of seen the majority of them um, it really is just a matter of interface like how the controls are how big does it get um, do they support extra features like freeze, freeze modes color contrasts that kind of thing um, I'm not going to go into a huge amount of detail on all of these but I just want to show you that you know these are out there and they're really cheap so let's say that for different tasks you want to use one over another um, you know like I said I find that one of them generally works better when looking at a computer monitor or like an actual screen versus paper so you know one app may work better in that case one may look better if I really want to use a contrast setting one may have a refresh rate that is a little bit better so it really just depends on you know and, and I can't say what that's going to be for you because each person's vision is different what they see well and what they don't see well is different so all of those things are going to be a factor in you know does it blur too often um, do I need those extra color contrasts all those types of things um, <clears throat> are, are, are aspects that you're going to have to decide um, what is most important to you when choosing a CCTV or magnifier app so um, but the nice thing is is like I said even let's say you buy I have I have what one two three four five six seven eight I have eight apps in this folder right now even if you were to get all eight you're probably gonna spend less than 20 30 bucks versus a portable CCTV a standalone CCTV while good um, can run you anywhere from four hundred dollars to nine hundred or better so you know I mean if it's something that you just you kinda have to weigh that or if you're getting financial assistance and getting that or if you want to carry another device or you just want to carry your phone um, you know remember if you're using your phone for all these different tasks magnifying reading a book um, you know all the normal stuff um, check out my Mophie case review you know you're sucking down a lot of battery life you may want to look into a battery case because it's very helpful I'm gonna show you one other app uh, actually let me check something here real quick yeah Maglite Pro is the the magnifier app that I just showed you briefly um, that's another one that seems to be pretty good although I haven't played with it a whole lot um, but I found it to be comparable to the other ones that I've shown you so far the other one that also has a lot of features is this one here um, which is vision assist this one they do a pretty good job uh, I can pinch to zoom again and again I'll put the the torch as they call it wow that's really big let me uh let me zoom that out a little bit so that one also does very well and also let me turn voice over on because I don't remember what these buttons all are so on the left side you have your increase and decrease contrast 
and you have, if you don't want to pinch and zoom, you can on the right hand side, those blue buttons, those will in increase and decrease your zoom. And your change mode is you're changing your color. Toggle torch is your flashlight or your flash and your pause display. So again, it's like your freeze frame. You can toggle your autofocus on the top. Help, toggle autofocus, and settings. And I'm going to go into settings here really quick because there are a lot of customizations that you can make in here and you'll just want to kind of play with them. Um, display modes, I would keep that on. Now you notice that this interface has not been updated to iOS 7 because it's using the old button styles. And God, just doesn't that look so much better? I mean, look at the contrast, look at the actual buttons. I, I just like that so much better. I kind of miss the old style. A little reminiscing there. But smart text, you may, if you're, especially if you're on an older device, you may want to experiment with that a little bit because it's going to try to clean up the clarity a little bit and make it even better to visually see, but at the cost of performance. So if you don't have one of the later devices, um, you're probably going to notice a lot more blurring and maybe some choppiness. So that may be a feature that you may have to work with a little bit. B and W video, you can turn that on or off. So if you want it, not really a high contrast thing, but if you want to have just a black and white and get rid of the color, um, like a grayscale, I like to have that on as an option that I can cycle through because it's kind of nice. Um, now, highlight mode colors. I kind of wish that you could just check multiple ones of these and then when you're hitting the mode button, it would just switch. But instead, for convenience, basically what they're doing is they're letting you pick one of these and then you'll switch between full color, black and white, that grayscale up there, and then one of these high contrast modes because they're saying, well, what contrast mode works best for you? Pick one of these and then you can, you can use it as like a quick setting. So you don't have to jump through all of them if you don't want to, which there are advantages to doing that. Um, but so it's just up to you how you want to look at it, but I can do black on white, white on black, black on yellow, blue on yellow. I'm going to say white on black because that's the one that a lot of people like. So I'll demonstrate that here in a minute. Enable highlights in reverse color mode. Uh, I don't exactly know what that does or not exactly sure how to explain that. Enable panning when only when only when paused. That's kind of a neat feature. I'll show you that in a minute too. Tap screen to hide controls. I would definitely recommend putting that on so that you can tap the screen and make the interface go away so you can just have solid a full screen mag of magnification. Disable, uh, disable. disable auto okay. Disable auto um, disable auto I don't know. I would just leave that alone unless you really need to play with that feature, the disable auto tuning display. Use buttons, Use buttons for zooming threshold. I would leave that alone. Send, send to and send suggestion to author. So Done. let's see up up there. Look at the. I, again, just like I said, as comparison, uh, having the old interface, you can tell that this top bar, this title bar with that button, you can tell that, hey, that's a button. You can tell that, hey, that's outside of the settings area. There's actually separation. Um, so much nicer than the iOS 7 flat look, I think. Kind of refreshing. So let's go done. I'm going to kill voiceover again, and I am going to pinch to zoom, and I am going to switch modes. Now we've got black and white, and there we have high contrast. So I'm going to zoom in a little bit more. Now here is what I was talking about. Look at 
that is very flickery. Um, you're not seeing things. Uh, well, it's actually worse on the video. I've been looking at the phone. Um, but you do get a lot. As you're moving the camera, I'm not sure how much of it. Well, actually, it's cleared up now. So maybe it's just a matter of like, you know, we're, we are taxing this because we are going over airplay and we are doing the extra processing of this high contrast color. When you're moving or when you're standing still, it looks pretty good. But when you are moving, there's going to be some flicker. There's going to be some blurring and you'll just have to see on your device how much that actually happens. So let me zoom out again. Yeah, that's pretty blurry. <laughs> um, but again, like I said, some of that is the video itself. So let me switch back. Oops. Now when I'm on full color. Oh, wait, no, this is, uh, hold on. No, let me see. There's full color. So, when you're doing the full color thing, you'll get a little bit of blurring, but it's not near as bad. It doesn't flicker near as much. Um, but again, a lot of this is subjective. How many apps do you have open in the background? What speed of device do you have? What camera does your device have? Are you using the flash? Typically, the flash will clarify. It'll make things a little bit clearer. So unless it's really glossy material or in general, it looks really bad with the flash. Um, I would probably just recommend going with using the flash. And again, that one I, I want to like. I do like it. This Vision Assist app. But out of the ones that I've shown you so far... Those are the one, or that, that one, I think, is the most processor intensive. So maybe some of this blurring and flickering, especially when you're doing these high contrast colors, are not going to be as much of an issue in future versions of iOS because maybe, the I, maybe iOS will be more optimized. Um, obviously, we're going to have faster processors. Maybe a future version of it will take advantage of the 64-bit processors on the newer devices. The cameras will be better, faster, be able to have a higher refresh rate. So you never know. Um, but it is an app that is worth having in your toolkit for, sh uh, for people if you're showing it to them or for yourself if you um, <clears throat> just want a magnification option. But... Those are really the ones I'm going to show you. These other ones here, I mean, you can grab them. They're not bad. Um, they're just little older ones and ones I heard about. I really haven't played with those near as much, so I don't really know a whole lot about them. But they didn't immediately capture my attention. But I've shown you four pretty good options. Um, I think any of them... Are, are a good choice. Um, I personally use the Over 40 Plus app a lot. It doesn't do the extra color modes, but the refresh rate is generally very good. The high level of magnification is good. And it's just a really easy, friendly app to use. Um, I mean, not to say the other ones aren't, but um, it's just, it's a long time favorite of mine and I kind of keep going back to it. So, I know this video is long overdue. I have been wanting to, and I've said I've promised that I was going to do this video for quite some time on the channel. But now I have finally gotten the chance, and I think this is really the best way to do it because you are seeing exactly what is on my phone. I'm not showing. I'm not trying to record one phone that's recording another phone that is recording a piece of paper, and that would just look like a mess. So. Again, this reflector program has really saved the day. So 
that is a quick look at some low vision CCTV or magnifier apps available in the App Store. I believe, I think Vision Assist may be the most expensive of the lot that I've shown you. It may be five or ten bucks tops. I, like I said, I think iCam is free, and I think the other two are, I think over 40 plus, like I said, is four or five bucks tops. So you could set aside 20, 25 bucks and be able to afford all four of them, and you can subjectively take your pick which one works best for you. So, yeah, hope you guys enjoyed that. Uh, hope you guys found it helpful. Uh, again, like I said, I just apologize for the such a late, you know, like I said, wanting to do this forever and just being able to get to it now. But technically, I've, I have the means to do a decent job of it. So...